What's happening in the real estate market pre and post COVID? Please welcome Jessica Kaufman with the Corcoran Group interviewing David Robinov of Ackman Ziff. David has been in the real estate industry for the past 30 years, both selling and financing commercial real estate assets. College focusing on engineering. I have quite a bit of family that's in real estate. My dad was a leasing broker, um, and it served me well in that my first job out of college was with a developer. Um, and three years after college, when the uh, early 90s came around and there was no more construction financing, I switched over to from being a principal to a broker. And uh, pretty much for the last 30 years of my career, 25 years, I've been doing brokerage. A little bit about my background. I'm an accountant. I used to work as a public auditor at KPMG, and I loved being with different clients and different types of industries and loved working with people. And that's what really drew me to being a real estate broker. Office spaces are back, I think, because a lot of companies are trying to figure out this new normal with the six feet of social distancing, whether they're going to do A and B weeks or, um, you know, putting um, groups of people remotely, they still need more space and people still need places to work. They can't be in these cramped apartments or in the same place. It's just not working permanently. So even these WeWorks, even perhaps office spaces within new developments and older offices, they're gonna be in high demand at least for the next year, year and a half till we figure out how we're gonna do this new normal in the uh, company setting. Uh, I definitely agree. I think what will happen is that there'll be sort of a split. There'll be some people who we figure out don't need to be in our headquarters, and there'll be some people that we, we, we realize just can work from home effectively. Um, but also we'll have people in the office that will need more space around them. So whether we take satellite space and, and operate out of, say, uh, 10,000 feet in White Plains and still have 35,000 feet in Manhattan, um, or set up region, more regional offices so that we're not all on top of each other. Mm -hmm. um, I think that this work from home thing um, has been a, a short-term solution, but not a long-term solution. Part of the new normal being in real estate will be virtual tours. Right, sure, um, that makes sense. I wonder how co-ops are going to manage with board interviews. Those will be a, a tricky thing to do uh, virtually. I've heard over the past couple months that people have been doing virtual interviews. Um, for the amount that we're able to get done uh, through Zoom calls, sometimes I think, you know, it would have been just as easily to do it via email. Um, and, and I guess that, that just speaks to how I feel about the real estate business. Although it's always been transactional, um, some people always say, I, I went into real estate because it's tangible and I can touch it and feel it and bricks and mortar. And it's so different from being, as you say, an accountant or an auditor. Right. For me, that was part of it. But once I got out of development and got into brokerage, since I'm not really owning the asset, it was less about the bricks and mortar and more about the people. Um, brokerage, as you know, is really about bringing a buyer and seller or landlord and tenant together. Um, and so it's the people skills that I think are the most important. And it's really what I find uh, makes our business fascinating. Go back to work in the next three, four weeks. Are you feeling nervous about going to an office? Or Thing that we all work in the same industry, but as the states open up at different times, and um, it, it's not like, you know, we're all not operating off of a level playing field in some regards. Um, and it's very different from the people that I speak to that are outside the, the tri-state area. Concentrated area, we are the leading country in the world in cases. It impacts every element of our work lives because just getting to the office is going to be very challenging. So I think a shorter answer to your question would be, yes, I am very concerned. How do I get from Stanford, Connecticut, where I live, to my office at 3rd Avenue and 44th Street um, in a way that is safe and sane? I, you know, I... I I can't take Uber every day and I'm not going to bike there. Um, but at some point I'm either going to take Metro North or I'm going to be scared and stay in my apartment. And I haven't figured out, you know, what will be the most comfortable. Right. More of a personal way of doing business as opposed to corporates here, this group's here. The wall has kind of been taken down and everyone's dealing with this and everyone's working for the greater 
goal of getting back to the new normal and back to working as a cohesive unit. And it kind of feels like everyone's more in the boat to We're only about 45 or 50 people. And we've never really, we're a very flat organization, not a lot of hierarchy. Uh, we've always run the company more like a family. Uh, so I don't know that it's been the case, but I could see how it could be. For certain, when we have our company-wide calls, you see people's pets, not everybody is shaving. Um, <laughs> So yeah, there's, um, there's a little bit more intimacy associated with it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so in terms of real estate, where do you see it going? What I, I personally think, I'll start it off, um, like you mentioned, short memories, like Howard Lorber said, maybe yep. the next year and a half, they'll go to the suburbs, Westchester, Connecticut, those who are in New York City, perhaps they'll get a second, third home elsewhere so they can have space, fresh air, room for their kids to run around a pool. But the reason we're all in New York City is because we love to socialize. We love to go to restaurants, museums. What's gonna happen, short term, long term? Excellent questions. Uh, like I was saying about all the webinars, you know, too early to tell. <laughs> uh, so much of it depends on uh, if there is a vaccine or a treatment in the near term. Uh, and it also is going to depend a lot on people's tolerance for getting sick. Just because you open up restaurants doesn't mean people are going to um, leave their house and, and take whatever health risks may be associated with that. Um, so it's hard to speak about the population in general. There's older people who I think are concerned about getting sick. And by the same token, there's probably a, a level of people out there who say either I've been sick or I just don't care. I, I missed, as you say, the energy in the restaurants. There's a very large question about uh, can the restaurant survive uh, with six feet between the tables and their margins are very thin. So we'll see if, they, if they're able to make it. Um, they'll have to restaff, hire people who may not want to come back to an environment where they're exposed to so many people. There's right. so many questions, even sporting events. I read this morning that uh, they're talking about doing the sporting events without fans. And as somebody who's eager to watch something on television, uh, I'll tell you uh, that um, uh, not having people in the stands, that's a lot of revenue that's going to have to get made up somehow because you're going to have to play the pay, pay the players. So maybe more events become pay-per-view. Um, mm -hmm. And suddenly, you know, can everybody watch baseball if they have to start paying for it? So a lot of ramifications. I think two to three years from now, um, things are normalized. I think people do have short memories, but I think this one's going to linger um, for quite a bit longer because it's global and uh, it's, it's more health-related than any other like recession or anything else we've dealt with. You may be moving somebody from a smaller unit to a larger unit because they feel too cramped or vice versa. Someone has economic uncertainty in their life and they want to downsize. So I would expect that you're going to be busier than perhaps you've been over the last couple of months. And I feel the same. I feel like there's people who own a lot of real estate uh, who are going to need to shed some of it to generate cash. Um, mm -hmm. And there'll be others who say, this is a great time to be buying properties, maybe a little cheaper than a year ago. Right. Real, est real estate over the long term has been a very good investment, less volatile than the stock market. Um, and particularly offshore capital, uh, where the investment opportunities in their respective countries uh, are fairly de minimis, um, and they see the U.S. as being a, a better long-term play. So I think there'll be a lot of real estate activity going forward. It'd just be on you know, different price points. Anyone who has cash now is certainly investing in the market because it will hold even if you lose a couple of dollars here and there, at least, you know, it's not as volatile as the stock market. Thanks. Hey, let me just say in, in closing, um, sometimes people ask, uh, I don't want to call it secrets of your success, but takeaways that you could pass on to other people. Um, and uh, I have found that um, having a sense of humor is, is really a good skill. Um, having, uh, being a good listener. Uh, I try to treat my clients as people first and then clients second, try to focus on them as people and see the whole perspective, not just the properties they own. Um, and I think that the most important thing is um, just know your, know your stuff, know your business. Mm -hmm. uh, I think not, uh, and what type of lenders I should be talking to. That kind of knowledge uh, breeds confidence. Yes, I agree. And um, I think being in real estate, I always tell my clients and tell friends, it's not about real estate. It's a people business. You obviously have to know how to negotiate and you've got to know your stuff, but it's really about 
working with people that you trust. Why would you work with me as opposed to somebody else? I've had clients I've told, I don't think it's worth purchasing. I don't think it's worth selling right now. And I think they value that. It's a long-term game as opposed to a short-term transaction for me. Stay well. and I Well, thanks, David, for joining me. I appreciate it. And look forward to connecting uh, in the future and seeing if our predictions will come true.